Hey, this is Jonathan Gillum. I'm about to start the show. And I wanted to give you your Thursday tasking, but you know what? It's Thursday. Thursday used to be the greatest day of the week because it was almost Friday and you could start to feel that atmosphere of not having to work and have some time to yourself. So, I don't know. No tasking. Go enjoy yourself. Let's start the show. This is Jonathan Gillum back on the Experts Podcast. Happy Thursday. The truth has arrived. So I always say this every once in a while, you know, when the, when the news is slow, this is going to be a short show. It might be a short show. I don't know. Sometimes I get on rants. Uh, Yesterday was a very uh, interesting show, though, after watching the the bar hearings. I went and watched a, a little bit more of it today because they had the they had the tech CEOs up there. And once again, I, I tried to watch, you know, some of that. I'll have to go back through it because it was it basically boiled down to this. The, the stuff that I saw today is they would make a statement as always, but they were a lot more lenient with these tech CEOs and allowing them to speak uh, than they were bar. But even here, they didn't really allow them to answer answer questions. They, it, it's just not enough time for them to ask a question or make their statements as, as these Congress people do, and then allow the person being questioned to answer. So the whole process is, is just a grandstand period. That's all it is for the, the, uh, the congressmen and congresswomen, but it, this is how it went. Uh, did you do this wrong or yada, yada, yada. We, you know, this is wrong. This is wrong. Did you do that wrong? And then they would just simply either say, uh, no, usually it was, no, we didn't do that wrong. You know, this is the way we feel some of the, a lot of the times they actually didn't say no or yes. They would try to like when Google was being questioned, uh, Jim Jordan kept asking them, you know, are you going to, is Google going to guarantee that they will not uh, have a bias for one candidate to the next leading up to this election? And he would never say, he never did say, he almost said it once, but he would never say, no, we will not have bias. He would just say, well, we have, you know, uh, our system and our values and that goes against our values. And, but he would never say no. And I find that very interesting that he wouldn't say no, just no. It's a, it's a yes or no question. Are you going to skew this? Can it be skewed by your employees? And he would never say no. And of course, nothing happens. And I'm going to I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second because uh, Jim Jordan was on Tucker Carlson today. And I don't normally, on this show, I, unless I'm going to criticize him, you know, I don't play a lot of other people's sound bites, Right. I did with Brett Baer because it, I thought it was an important interview with Christopher Ray, and that's the type of things that I will play. But I'm I'm going to play a few, just a little bit, uh, or what the heck, I may play the whole interview that uh, Tucker Carlson had with uh, with Jim Jordan because there's certain things in there that I I think Tucker missed uh, that he could have he could have pushed a little bit harder on. But overall, you know, and I'm no Tucker Carlson fan. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think he did a great job today, but I'm not a, the reason I'm not a Tucker uh, Carlson fan. I've, you know, I've said this before on here. I, I've met the guy. He's extremely nice, but he aligns himself with these little lackeys that uh, work with the daily caller who are anti-Semites and uh, some of the nastiest little, you know, narcissistic little wannabes that I've ever come across uh, on social media or just in general. They, they have him on his show all the time as though they know anything about anything, and they're like 24 years old. And they're sitting there telling the president how he should fight a war with Iran, for instance. 
just ridiculous. But uh, so that's why, um, it, I you know Tucker's not a. I don't know if he's a bad guy. I don't know if his heart's bad. If he's a, a nasty person, he was nice to me, but I don't like when somebody comes on and portrays themselves, which is the constant in media, that they portray themselves as knowing all these things with these opinions that are this is very academic of the way people do these things they they act like they know all these things but they're they only know those things because somebody else told them or because they looked it up online it's not like they have the experience to analyze this and say well i don't actually see that that's the case it's not like they investigate it clearly they, they have people in their brain room do that and then they just report it in an angry way that's what this usually ends up, you know, like I, I'll give you a perfect example. And then I want to, I'm going to just talk for a minute uh, about another subject, but I want to, I want to tell you this. I, this was fascinating when I was sitting there, I was thinking about this very subject today and I'm watching on YouTube, I'm um, going through and watching different um, videos and such of uh, these Ted talks crack me up because when I go on YouTube, and I look at the TED Talks, and then you know how you, it, the algorithm gets that you visited te TED Talks, right? So the next time you log on, it's going to have TED Talks on there. Um, it's going to come up on your uh, homepage feed for what you might want to watch. Every, almost every single one of the TED Talks that came up were, uh, is God real or is he not? The argument of whether or not God is real. It, I was like, what the heck? How did this pop up here? But that's what it is. I mean, there must have been a dozen or more of those videos popping up. So-and-so argues against so-and-so. So-and-so's talk about God is not real or science or this or why people believe stupid things. And you click on that, and the first thing the guy starts talking about is about how uh, uh, intelligent design is a fallacy. Uh, very odd, you know, very odd. And and it ruins the, the whole platform of TED Talk unless they're – platform is to spread leftist type of things because that seems what it's actually turned into um another one was a black guy talking about how he infiltrated the alt-right through the internet and he was talking about how you know he learned some good things and this and that but it's it's very interesting when you have somebody on there you know who is a part and says they're a part of like black lives matter and they talk about how they live in a world where they're judged and this you know systematic racism is there and then when they speak, they literally, when they talk about people who are conservative, they, they put them in these categories that are just highly unrealistic. You know that they have no clue what they're talking about, except for the fact that that's just what everybody says on the left. And that's the group think mentality. So it's always, as I pointed out yesterday, when it comes to the left and the way they group think, uh, the way they're the collective is that they will, I don't know if, I know it's a tactic, but I think a lot of these people literally don't even realize they're like robots. They don't even th realize that they're doing this. They will literally accuse other people of doing what they're doing at the same time they're doing it. And it's a, you know, it's a minimization tactic to accuse somebody else. Uh, hey, look over there. They're doing that. Uh, it also is a way for them to deflect, and so it takes attention away from what they're doing, and people that follow them will just automatically think that that's what the other person is doing, where if they just looked at the the facts of what's going on right in front of them, they would see that the left is doing exactly everything that they're accusing the right of doing. <clears throat> so anyway, very interesting because when I was I was listening to this, I watched the Jim Jordan uh, video and was f reflecting on Tucker Carlson and all these people that are in media, how they have virtually everyone in media that I've seen, virtually everyone has zero experience in anything except for graduating college and going into media. They have no knowledge or personal experience or real understanding, in-depth understanding of what they're analyzing. They just don't, and they sit there night after night. So anyway, I'm reflecting on all these things. And there's a TED talk, or no, excuse me, <clears throat> it wasn't a TED talk. It was a, um, it was an article on, might have been foxnews.com. And they're talking about what, which uh, one thing about foxnews.com, you can definitely tell that the Murdochs are involved because when Roger Ailes was alive, you didn't see, 
you know, every other article about a nipple slip or about this model says this, but at least three times a week, there are stories about Prince Charles or Prince Harry or, or something that has to do with the royal family. Something that n- most of us are not interested in at all, but somehow it makes its way into onto foxnews.com at least, I don't know, two, three times a week. So I digress. I go on after listening to all this stuff and thinking, reflecting, I see this story about, it says that the universe, it, it's actually one point they estimate through, they have this equation that they do, they estimate that it's 1.3 or 1.4 billion years younger than they thought, okay, than they mistakenly assumed it was through this, al- this not algorithm, but this, uh, I don't know, the calculation that they do somehow, they come up with that. So... Right there, it shows you that science is only as good as what they know. And it's a lot of assumption. And and when you read the story and the way it lays it out, you know, the vast expanse of the universe is so vast. It's so vast that it's hard to say that anything out there is 100% this. And those of you that know me, I'm a stickler for, I don't put things out unless I can verify them. Every once in a while, I make the mistake. You know, I'll get some information and I'll make a mistake and uh, and then I'll retract it. And I'll even say, sorry, I made this uh, mistake. I, I thought I had this verified and it turns out it wasn't verified. I have no problem with that. I'd rather, you know, suffer through, you know, the idiots that are like, oh, well, whatever they're going to say and, and have the truth out there than it coming back to bite me or just ethically putting something out that's not right. So I go back and I'm and a little bit later after uh, I go for a walk, work out a little bit, I go back and I look at these videos, another Ted talk where a guy was talking about, um, why people believe stupid things. And he brings up the fact that the universe is 1.3 or excuse me, 13 billion years old, 13 point something billion years old. Of course, this was made, this video was made before this new calculation and has something to do with the Hubble telescope and the way that they look and they put calculations in there. And so he was wrong. He was wrong. And in the same sentence he was talking about, or same, you know, little concept that he was talking about right there is where he was talking about intelligent design not being real because you can't prove it. And things have to be proven in order to be considered real. And most conspiracy theories can't be proven, and therefore they're not real. So (laughs) I find it very uh, ironic that while he's saying all this stuff and belittling intelligent design, which if you don't know what that is, it's, you know, God created the universe, then and all things in it for in an intelligent way and for a reason, um, while he's putting that down, he's actually spitting out information about the universe that wasn't correct. And so isn't that the problem that we face now? Isn't that what almost all of the stuff now is that's the problem with what's happening in this country? Think about this. Before the, the invention of the computer and then later on the cell phone and the, and social media, right? Especially social media out of all that. The ability of people now, not just to share information, not just to get information, but also to share and give false information and for people to get false information, misleading information, is far greater than it's ever been in the history of human beings. Far greater than it's ever been. So when when we look at group think it is very dangerous it's always been dangerous all right but before let's look at stalin and let's look at hitler for instance uh look at marx look at lenin you know these individuals were came about in a time where things were very rough every single one of these leaders mussolini for instance these people would rise to power during a time when it was not Things weren't going that great in their countries. And what the, and so they ride that wave in by either tweaking a few things and then 
using propaganda to make it look like it's way better than it really is or using propaganda to push themselves into a position where they can make changes, tweak those things and push out, which I, you know, I believe in nationalism. Don't get me wrong. I am a, I'm an American. Okay. And I believe that there's an importance of culture and uh, recognition of where you're from. But the thing that the left is always talking about where uh, these different dictators and fascists use nationalism and they, they, they try to pin that on the president and on us that are conservative. The difference there is that, that the, the, or the, I would say the danger thing about nationalism is that bad people can utilize that as a reason to commit atrocities or as a reason to muster the people into group think. And that's really, other than the atrocities, to me, that's really the most dangerous thing. And we, and we see signs of that now. We see the culture in this uh, country and really around the world, but we'll focus on this country, being affected because people on the left, and I'm, and I'm positive people, I don't like to use the terms left and right, but we'll say conservatives and Republicans and the, part, the political parties and the power hitters, the people who are big money people and activists who have an agenda, usually a communist agenda, these people will create problems so that the appearance of crisis is in the air, so that the appearance of chaos is in the air. I mean, look, there's protests going on all over the place that in reality, the majority of them turn into riots either by themselves or the second that somebody approaches them and tells them to get off a road, for instance. I saw a video from out in Long Island, people are in the middle of the freaking road and they're surprised when the cops roll up and start arresting them. And then they start going off and doing their little chants, and they get pushed back on the sidewalk. A couple of them get arrested, and they're like, oh, you know, I can't. There's a violation of our First Amendment. To my knowledge, nowhere in the Constitution does it say in there that you're able to go and stand in a road and disrupt traffic where people are trying to live their lives and get to a hospital, for instance, or get to work. It doesn't say that. And civil disobedience is uh, one thing, but actually going out there and causing a, 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 an imminent threat or an imminent danger is not protected by the First Amendment. Now, the reason they do those things and these things are happening have nothing to do with George Floyd or black people being treated wrongly or anything else that they can come up with. You've seen the same thing when it comes to the, the climate and on and on. The reason they do that is because they're trying to sow into the psyche of the nation that we are in crisis and that we are completely divided. Now, we are divided in a lot of ways. There's no doubt about that. Opinions along political lines seem like everything. Put a mask on because there's a virus. Conservatives say no. Liberals say do it, right? Right. Why that is a politi- why there's a political divide there, I have no idea because I look at things from a medical or an effective perspective. And just because a politician says it's right, I'm going to go ask a doctor. And maybe I'll ask two or three of them. And most of the doctors that I've talked to, I will say all the doctors that I've talked to, have said that the, the right kind of mask could protect you from some virus, but most likely the mask is only going to be good for keeping you from getting other people sick, right? That's who I go ask. I don't just go off of what the group is saying or because, you know, a politician said something and that's what I'm going to go with, right? Or because I hate Dr. Fauci, you know, because people hate Dr. Fauci. So they're going to do the opposite and find fault in everything that he does. I don't, I don't think that way. And that's why I see through the chaos, right? That's why I see through the chaos. And I see the reality of what's happening. It's not that there's chaos and there's people on the left and the right that are trying to uh, get to the front so that they can do good, so they can make things better. It's not that. It's created chaos so that people will look for somebody to save them. That's what it really comes down to. That's why all these dictators and fascists got in office because they had, I'm sure they had real problems, but a lot of those problems were exacerbated by war that they created and things that they were doing. That's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. So 
I just want to cover this one more time, and then I'm not going to really say anything else about it because I, I don't really engage with this community except when somebody comes on and besmirches my reputation. I'm not even going to say the guy's name. I'm sure they'll listen to it. Uh, this Twitter puss, all right? He's like a little gossip puss that's all over Twitter, and he's a, he's a QAnon guy, right? So what they do is they come on, and I, when I say they, not all the Q people. I, I said this yesterday. I know a lot of people who believe in this Q thing and this plan, right, which has not materialized. I don't know if you all realize that. But this one guy in particular, you know, he comes on, and he will every once in a while seek me out. He's like a little fanboy. And he'll seek me out and then he'll take something that I posted. And I did post something about QAnon. I basically said QAnon's not real, that the, the deep state does what they want because they do. There, there's nothing secret about this. The deep state, as I explained yesterday, exists in many different levels. And they do whatever they want. And why? Because nobody's trying to stop it. Not Bill Barr, not Durham. Not even the president. Nobody has stopped this. Certainly not the left. A hundred percent of the people in Washington, D.C. have done nothing effective to stop the deep state. Why? Because many of them are the deep state. And while this president, who I support, has done less to stop the deep state than he has to build the wall, a lot of that has to do with the people that he employs who are the deep state. Whether he realizes that or not, I don't know. I wish I could sit down with him for, for five minutes and explain to him in a chart the way the deep state, from my perspective of having worked in government, how the deep state works. A lot of this I didn't recognize until I got out of government. And then when you look back on it and you see what's happening, you're like, oh, Lord, I saw that while I was in there. And that's one of the reasons why I left and took an early retirement out of the Bureau. So with getting back with the Q stuff, you criticize, the one guy comes after and says that I'm a fraud or that I'm part of the deep state or whatever he wants to accuse me of. He then, you know, goes out and puts a, does a screen grab and puts a picture up there and then will say whatever he wants. And here's the problem. Look, I've done that to other people. Somebody comes and insults me. I'll take a screen grab of them and what they said, put it up, and then make fun of it. And my followers will go after it. So that's, you know, that's the war on Twitter. That's what people do. But usually, almost 100% of the time, the people that I'm doing that to are people who are trolls that are from the left. But that's not the case when it comes to some of these QAnon people right? The QAnon followers, the people who, who really take this stuff emotionally, seriously, or what I'm starting to find with this guy in particular, it's a competition thing. He, like so many of the people that exist in these upper levels of the Q movement, they make money off of the Q movement. They have their videos that they do, their Patreon accounts set up, and they make money from donations. Listen, I'm going to explain to you in a second about what I really feel about you as a Q follower and about the movement. But know this, don't give your hard-earned money to any one of these people. If you do your own research and you want to find out something, you do it. Do not do not give your money to these people. Most of them are frauds, and it doesn't matter if it's Q or if it's Amway or if it's you know Candace Owens or any of these people. Don't give them money. Now, if you do find somebody, listen, if Dinesh D'Souza had a GoFundMe account because he's wanting to start a show, I would give that guy some cash because he has seen things that other people have not, and he gets it. But the people who come on there, who come and do these things and push this out for money, you can quite often, and I've had a GoFundMe page. Look, I have one. Uh, that's how I funded the show that I did every single night for three years. And the people who watch the show are the ones who helped fund it because instead of regular TV, they would watch that. And if somebody wants to do that for somebody, that's fine, but don't give these people money that are, who are profiting off of something that they're just picking up from someone else. 
as and trying to bait the mystery because here's the reality of all this this is how i feel about the q and i so you can take this if you listen to now and hopefully you have hopefully that guy pushed people over here because he hates me so much and you know he's like this big fanboy and he wants people to go and hate me too okay here's the reality i love every patriot in this country i don't really care how you get your information as long as it's good information if you're out there online telling people that something exists when you have no evidence that it exists because your information came from an anonymous source or a group of people that are saying i know this and they don't or they think they know it and they put it out as truth i think that i don't think i know that is dangerous and it's especially dangerous right now in the time that we're at we are at a point a critical point in this nation where there are forces that were subversive but are now active they're not hiding what they do and they are trying to destroy the constitution when i see patriots and i said the same thing i'm going to liken it to this uh, when they uh, were raising money there's a guy who's a triple amputee who's in the air force he was raising money as a civilian through a GoFundMe account to build portions of the wall. They raised over $20 million. Some people sent in, I mean, most people sent 50, 180 something. I think they were doing a campaign where people sent like $80 in. They raised $20 million. Now, anybody that knows anything about the way the government works is gonna know that the majority of that money would never go into a wall that has to do with what the government is doing. The other thing is, that anybody who takes that much money and there's no oversight like there's not a third party that watches that money and the person that takes it is also the person charged with spending it there's going to be a problem but people did it blindly and why did they do it well because they're patriots okay and i love them for that i love the fact that they wanted to help build that wall that part is great what's not great is that they trusted blindly and that they did it from their couch you see, we cannot win this war from our couch. And the biggest complaint I have about the Q movement is that people are being told that there's a plan, that there's this information, and this is being revealed to you slowly, and you're going to understand this, and it will predict future events. Listen, you can find out almost, I would say, 100% of the information that they're giving you if you just study the news and talk to people who've served in an area in which you're concerned about, you will be able to figure out it's not a big game. These, I mean, have you seen Jerry Nadler? Have you seen Condoleezza Rice? Have you seen Nancy Pelosi? These types of people. Uh, have you seen Joe Biden? Do you think that they're going to go that deep in their plan? No. So my biggest gripe is that people are sitting and waiting when they should be communicating, having dialogue, getting up off their couch, going outside. Do you realize if we had I said this yesterday, 10,000 people that are patriots in Portland that went and surrounded and pushed out those riders and then went back the next night to make sure that they weren't there, they would go away. Some people may get hurt but I can guarantee you they would go away. That is real action. And that is what's going to push this back. Not a master plan, not secret information. that's going to be revealed to you. Okay. I quite frankly, don't trust anyone in the government who's revealing classified information or it, that is pushing information. If it's real in a way that is covert like that, because I can't trust that person. It would be better for them through a third party to say this there's no secret this is what the left is doing this is how we counter them why does it have to be so why does it have to be such a mystery for you to figure out have you ever thought about that so the bottom line is i don't hate people who believe in q i want you to be a successful patriot and i want to stand with you shoulder to shoulder but i cannot sit back 
with the training experience that I have and with the federal service and the state service and the local service that I have, having worked in law enforcement and in government and understanding the way things work, having run sources, I ran human sources. I know when somebody's bullshitting me and when they're not, I can tell when something's being minimized. So it creates that mystery. I've seen it in people trying to get away with stuff. I've seen it with people trying to get me to pay them as a source, give me little tidbits of information. So we'll keep them on the payroll. I don't make these judgments under unlike this little, you know, wussy boy who likes to make it sound like I'm some kind of deep stater. I don't make irrational decisions based on something that I don't know while I wait on a mystery to unfold. And it pains me out of the goodness of my heart, not hate. It pains me to see people waiting when they could be taking action and waiting for a mystery that's never going to be solved and waiting for someone else who they believe knows to guide them. You're an American. You are Americans. You guide yourself. You get together with people and you all guide yourselves. This isn't group think. The founding fathers didn't create this country so that we could be told what to do. They created this country so that we could tell the government what to do, so that we could be the ones that are the powerful part of this country, so that we would stand together. So when I see this, it pains me. And one person said, I'm not following Gillum because, you know, he, I don't like people who criticize other people and they, they're so blunt and nasty. And of course, her thing was something about light. Listen, uh, I'm a trained warrior, okay? I don't beat around the bush. And I don't, and in this period of time that we're at right now, we don't, I don't have time to massage you and make you feel good. I'll tell you once, I love you. I'm here with you. I stand with you. Now let's get it straight. And if I say something blunt, I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings, but right now it's time for you to toughen up. And if you got a problem with that, then you go do your own thing. But if you try to b search my reputation and say that I'm a deep stater or that I don't care or that I hate people, you're an effing liar. And trust me, it will come back on you. But quite frankly, you go do whatever you want. I don't care. But just know that my criticism is not out of disgust. My cr well, no, I shouldn't say that. My criticism is out of disgust. My criticism isn't out of hatred for people when it comes to the QAnon stuff. My criticism comes from the lack of action, comes from the fact that the, from the time this thing started to now, people have become more ingrained on Twitter, more ingrained on their couch, and less out there doing stuff when right now is the time it has to happen. Because in November, if the president doesn't win again and they win Congress and the presidency, you, you may not have a cell phone. And one of the things that just came up all of a sudden now, the, all these Q people are, are coming at me saying, this is that guy who's saying that there's going to be a civil war. Okay, so I'm just supposed to sit back and act like there's no civil war possibly? You're in a civil war, Knuckles. It's already occurring. Go and watch. Listen, just listen to this. You tell me. You've listened. You've, of course, you've heard these rioters on, on TV and the way they're screaming and hollering. Let's see if I can pull this up here. Listen to the way that these, the way Jim Jordan is treated and the way the left is screaming. Now, remember, when these people, they're all social distance inside this hearing. And when they talk, they take their mask off, right? When they're talking to the microphone, they take their mask off. Then they get yelled at by somebody for not wearing their mask when they just had it off for five minutes speaking. <laughs> but li listen how they react. The chair now recognizes a gentlelady from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to... Now, what she's going to say real quick is that she's going to criticize Jim Jordan 
for making it sound like he was talking about conspiracy theories when he was questioning the CEO of Google about whether or not they were going to give preferential treatment to the Joe Biden campaign. She's going to say in a, in, in a statement calling Jim Jordan a conspiracy guy, and he didn't like that. To uh, redirect your attention to antitrust law rather than fringe conspiracy theories, uh, Mr. Bezos, our investigation... Mr. Chairman... Okay, so here he goes, and now I'm not so much concerned about Jim Jordan. He says what is proper, but listen how the left reacts to this, and think to yourself, because you can't see the video, I can, think to yourself, is this one of those riot protests where they're screaming, you know, uh, whatever the stuff is that they say, or is this in, in a, a congressional hearing? Because it sounds a lot like the protesters, and that's not by mistake. We have the email. There is no fringe. It's not your time. Jordan, you do not have the time. Be, please but, be respectful but, but of your colleague. Someone directly she controls directly, the time. Directly. Put your mask on. Mr. Someone, put your mask on. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Raskin. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan you want to talk do, about masks. Mr. Jordan. Ms. Why Scanlon. Why would the Deputy Secretary of Treasury unmask Michael Flynn's Mr. name, Mr. Mr. Raskin? And what I want to know Mr. is Scanlon, when someone comes after my motives for asking questions, I get a chance to respond. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, do you see that? Do you see the nonsense that, that, that exists there? You don't want that in the patriots in this country. You don't want something like that af affecting our ability to face that. That is disgusting. That is the left. That is what we need to be concerned with. Not whether or not, you know, whether or not you have more followers, whether or not where your information comes from is more important whether or not the information is correct, that's the biggest thing. Whether or not the people are out there actually doing work. You know, another person posted something and at me and highlighted that uh, uh, saying that those that attack uh, have an agenda or remain plugged into the biggest disinformation campaign to ever be witnessed. So that was on a Q drop, right? See, I, that's why I don't trust these things, because when you put something like that there, that is a blanket statement. And there are going to be people when you have group think, right? And don't lie to yourself. What's happening with Q is group think. When you have that, people are going to be critical. And a lot of times it's going to be people that care about the nation or care about you. When you automatically put a blanket statement out like that, saying that anyone that questions this is obviously with the deep state that to me sends up major red flags and when somebody on twitter comes at me using that as their proof that somebody like me is part of the deep state what it shows you is that they don't want other people bringing in facts that may or may actually go around them or may lead away from what they're saying because it's not provable. Now, if you listen to this, if you listen to what I just said, all the stuff I just said, and your end concept of what I said and your opinion now is that I'm a loud mouth or that uh, he's obviously part of the deep state, or if you feel like um, I don't have enough experience to talk or that, you know, whatever, whatever gossipy puss is out there saying things. If you, that's the way you feel, then, hey, you go do your thing. Go do your thing. Believe what you want to believe. But I'm here to tell you, folks, I've, I've been to the top of the mountain of team, right? I've seen what a real team can do. And what's occurring right now with the, with the patriots, I'm not even going to say conservatives, the constitutionalists in this country, the people who care about this nation as it is, what I'm seeing now is division, and what I see from the Q followers, when somebody disagrees, it, there'll, there'll be a couple of, of key people that will go out and they all have anonymous, uh, anonymous accounts. They don't even have their face or their real name on there. So, you know, it's not like uh, they, they are bold enough to say, this is who I am and this is how I feel. So they, it's a made up persona and they come out there and they come at you and they try to discredit you, not because you're on the left, but because you have a different opinion about how you collect information or about where this should go. If somebody says no to me, they say, there's not going to be a civil war. 
and they want to have an honest discussion about it. I'll have a discussion with them. I say, what do you mean that there's not going to be a civil war? I mean, yes. In fact, one of my friends who's a, also a former SEAL said that, we're, no, he said, we're not there. And I said, you're exactly right. We're not there yet to where we pick up guns, but we are in a civil war right now. There is a civil war happening in the nation right now. It's just not an armed conflict. And people need to get that nonsense out of their head, which one is which. It's not a, just a civil war when you pick up guns. There was a civil war long before they picked up guns and went to battle between the North and the South. So if somebody wants to have it, a discussion with me, I would say the same thing I just said right there. And then I would give them a chance to come back and we'd have a discussion. But I'm not going to go try to ruin that person's name because they disagree with me. What I would tell them is, listen, if that's the way you believe, I'm not going to change your mind. However, when it goes down, if something goes down, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is how I'm trying to stop it. If you see signs of that happening, let's coordinate and let's see if we can stop it. You see, that is the way unified people react. That is the way a team reacts. Not to go out and try to kill somebody's reputation. Not that you're going to kill my reputation. And not that I really care. To tell you the truth, the way things are going now and the way that, that what I've seen behind the scenes in media that most people will never see actually is disgusting. And what I've seen in politics, it's absolutely a lost cause. So quite frankly, if I had the cash right now, I'd probably be in my RV and disappear because I'm not real sure if the conservatives, the constitutionalists, the patriots in this country have what it takes to stand together. They definitely have what it takes to win and to fight and secure the freedom in this country and to make sure that the left and the leftists and those weirdos that you just heard on that video, that they don't get in power. But will you? So the bottom line is, if you're a Q follower, I don't hate you. You believe what you want, but it's not going to stop me from pointing out where I see things that are wrong. And when I do, it's not because I think you're dumb or because I hate you. It's because I think that you're misguided based on what I know and based on what I've seen when it comes to collecting information and minimization by people who are trying to lead people astray. That's the fact. Let's take a break for a second. I'm going to come back and just touch on a few more things, and then we're going to call it a Thursday. See, I told you. I said it was going to be a short show. Never fails. I get on a rant. We'll be right back. Now, I know you guys hear me talk about my books all the time on this show, but I have to tell you, if you have not ordered Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival, I mean, right now is the time when you should be doing that. Honestly, look around. Is anything getting safer in this country? I don't think so. And you need to start taking responsibility for your safety. You may not have law enforcement showing up at your place. So now is the time when you need to assess your threats. Now, the way you do that, the way you assess your threats is you read Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival, and you apply what I teach you in that book. The first half of the book is set up to show you how attackers look at you, why they would attack, who would attack, when it would happen, where it would happen, and how it would be carried out. You divide your life into sectors, and basically, it's not rocket science. You look at yourself from their point of view. I just show you how they do it. The second half of the book shows you how to take what you've learned and then build better defenses, awareness, plans of action, and strategies to, to mitigate these threats of attack sheep no more the art of awareness and attack survival there's two workbooks that go with it that you can order after that and actually apply it workbook number one is the threat assessment workbook and workbook number two is a defense assessment workbook so they go right along with the book the first one is like the first half of sheep no more the second one is half like the second half and then because i just didn't think that was enough for you to secure your home 
I came up with a children's book with Daniel Kreiner, who did the illustration of it. We put safety, communication, and awareness lessons all in the pictures. It's called The Adventures of Teen Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. And why is it a parent's book for children? Because you go to teenlittlebigs.com and get the lesson plans, hand the book of pictures to your child, and then you teach them two to eight on awareness, communication, and safety. Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival. It's two workbooks and the adventures of Team Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. This is how you secure your homeland. All right, so I said I was going to play the video with Jim Jordan and Tucker Carlson. So I'm going to go ahead and play that, and I'm going to go through it just like I did with Christopher Ray, and I'm going to tell you guys, you know, how, what I see here that's wrong. And I, I just want to say before before I play it, I, I, I really like Jim Jordan. I think he – he. I mean, I guess he does as much as he can. To, to be honest with you, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes in Congress – as far as what they do. Okay. I've, I spent some time, uh, when I was a senior in college, we had to work in the, in the RNC and the DNC. I got to spend a week, uh, assisting in the white house and yeah, I learned a lot, but that was in 1995. I don't know. And I've, and I've been around politics enough, haven't been in the bureau, seeing the way statistics are manipulated and the way Congress works and all this, but I'm not real sure what Congress people do and why they have these hearings and call these people up. They have little investigative power. They don't really, it, it's all built on, uh, you know, kind of pushed on to um, political lines. And as I stated earlier, it's really just more than anything. It's a um, grandstanding for Congress. I, I said this before, there is no, checks and balances in Washington, D.C. anymore. The only check and balance there is around the nation, that's city, state, and, and federal, is the Republican and Democrat parties. Uh, there really is, I mean, they all have different jobs. You have the Senate, you have the Congress, you have the presidency, and you have the Supreme Court. They have different jobs. But by and large, all their decisions are made along political lines. Uh, Jim Jordan's going to say in this video, you know, that uh, he's been working with the Senate. Well, why has he been working with the Senate? He's been working with the Senate because they're controlled by Republicans, not because there's people there that can do certain things. They can't, he just can't get anything done in, uh, in the Democrat uh, held Congress. But here's the thing. When the Republicans held Congress and the Senate and the presidency, they didn't get anything done. They didn't get anything done while Barack Obama was in office. So I'm not real sure that they're going to get anything done period but there there is no one thing that we know for sure there's no checks and balances and that's why the deep state is a, is able to flourish the way that they do so let's play this um this video and we'll go through it here let's see if they have, I have a commercial Talk first and do it okay Congressman Jim Jordan is a conservative. He was there today. He's the highest ranking Republican on the committee. He joins us. And this is Tucker Carlson from Fox for News. Coming on. Bad, Tucker. So Good you tweeted you. today a, t a tweet that was heartening, I think, to a lot of people. You said big techs out to get conservatives. Clearly true. It's yep. time they face the consequences. Right. So to the many frustrated viewers out there who don't think Republicans have forced them to face any consequences for the past four years. Tell us specifically, if you would, what those consequences are going to be. Well, you got to change. You got to work on Section 230. We're looking at that right now. You may have to. The Justice Department is looking at current antitrust law to go after these companies right now. And frankly, we may have to change the law. And we also have to continue to do what you've been doing. And thank you for doing that calling them out every time we see the bias, every time we see them become the facilitators of the mob to cancel people, we have to continue to call them out. Remember, Tucker, Twitter went after me two years ago. I've been talking about this for a couple of years. They shadow. Now, one thing he's talking about, Section 230, has to do with the Decency Act. It has to do with how they're regulated, how the, the social media um, platforms are regulated. Okay, just so you know that. 
and four members of Congress, 435 in the House, 100 in the Senate, only four, Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan, get, get shadow banned by Twitter. And of course, right. they just told us it was just a glitch. Are you, I, asked, I said, well, what, what'd you put in the algorithm? The names Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan. I think I said that on your show. So no, you, you out- did, and, I, and of course we agreed, but I'm a talk show host and we've got, you know, four million viewers or whatever, but my job is to talk. Lawmakers are tasked with running the country and passing our laws by definition. Right. And now there's a, there's an issue right there. Okay. Lawmakers are tasked with running the government and passing laws. But the reality is when we say running the government, it's really the people who work in government that run the government. What these people do at the top is they push ideology. That's really what they do. It's not so much ensuring that the government runs properly and passing laws that protect people and ensure safety. They, they're doing things, you know, like I uh, saw several years ago, $27 million for a habitat for chimpanzees that have been used in science. You know, that's, that's a kind of a typical thing that you could point out. That has nothing to do with our safety. That, that should have been done privately by who, even if it was government uh, uh, experiments or whatever it was. I don't know who it was for. I think they allotted it, and it was allotted to, to a non-governmental agency. Um, that's a waste of money, a waste of time, but that shows you a special interest. And then now when it comes to ideological stuff, they're going to pass things that have to do with race and have to do with gender and sexuality. And they're going to get into, especially like in the military, they're going to get into social value issues, not necessarily running the government and passing laws. You see, that's really where it's kind of gone to. These companies operate with a special carve out provided them by Congress And Congress has never done anything to rein them in. And so we've got, what, 96 days till the election. Are there going to be any consequences until then? Well, no, you just mentioned the most important thing. In 96 days, 97 days, whatever that number is, it's important we reelect Donald Trump and take back the House. Because do you think Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Jerry Nadler are going to fix this? Do you think they're actually going to stop big tech from attacking conservatives and censoring conservatives? No, I don't not. think so. So that, but, that's why the most important, Republicans aren't in control. I'm, we're working, working on the Senate, working with the Senate. There you go. Working on the Senate, working in the Senate, working with the Senate. See, there, that is the issue right there that I was talking about a second ago. I don't, I don't like where this has gone, where it just is strictly along party lines. There's nobody in Washington, D.C. that is doing things especially on the left, but I, I can't say on the right too because the right had their chance. They never, they didn't have day one. You didn't see the Republicans in Congress handing the president a, a new health care bill to say, this is how we get rid of, of Obamacare. This will really work. We've had seven years to think this out, Mr. President, and here you go. This is the best that we can come up with. They didn't do that. They didn't have anything. So I can't say that, you know, that it's just the, the Democrats that are destroying this country and, and the, 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 the check and balance is between the Republicans and Democrat. The truth is neither one of them do anything to solve problems. They just make more problems or they just string along a ki- and punt the football and never fix the problems that we have like this. And, and listen, everything that they're talking about right now is an issue. It's a tremendous issue. And as I brought up in, a, in a, uh, a past episode, talking about whether or not these companies should be broken up, I believe that they should. They're too big and they're too powerful. We used to communicate, you know, by a telephone. Then uh, when, the, when the telephone got too big, they broke it up. We communicate now. We collect information and communicate through TV, social media, and and then text and so, uh, social social messages like that. But the fact is, social media is probably one of the most dominant and controlling ways of communication and information dissemination or propaganda echo chambers that there has ever been in the history of mankind. And I believe they're too big. They need to be broken up. And the other part I don't like about it, even though I'm, I'm, I believe in capitalism, these people are too rich. I know that sounds terrible and I hate saying it, but the fact is 
they are ideologues and they do things with their money. And as I said in a, in a past episode, if you're going to let people be that rich, by all means, let them make their money. But there should be a cap on whether or not they can get involved with politics when they get to a certain level. Because you, you may be very entrenched in your ideology and your beliefs in a certain political party, and you want to give your money and you want to volunteer your time. Great. But you're, you're not going to be powerful enough unless you're sleeping with a candidate. You're not going to be powerful enough to sway the entire policy or the entire set of policies that these people may be pushing. But if you're a billionaire and you have something that is literally where you can manipulate what a billion people on this planet see with the click of a button, there's a problem. And I I don't believe in limiting somebody's success, but I do believe in limiting people who were not elected or who are not part of uh, a, a body that decides policy. These people are outside of the government that's elected. I don't believe that they should be able to have the influence that they do because what you end up seeing is the same thing like they have in, in Europe where they have, you know, you have a ruling body and then you have a monarchy where it used to just be a monarchy. Now they have a ruling class and they have a monarchy and the monarchy holds a lot of weight in the way things are done. And, and, and this is even worse. It's almost like having uh, two different types of governing bodies. You have the politi- uh, politicians and then you have the big money donors or the big money people that can throw and manipulate information. So this needs to be looked at. It needs to be looked at quickly because it's on both sides. The Koch brothers, I don't, uh, those guys are deep staters and I didn't like them. It's now the Koch brother. I don't like them either. Everybody that I've ever met that was associated with them, I, I just, they skeeve me out. It's very strange how they are particular in those types of people. Same thing with the Daily Caller and the people. And I wrote articles for the Daily Caller, but it's like where they've gone now and who they employ, it's weird. All right, let's finish listening to this. On this 230 issue, we're looking at every remedy we can because there has to be a remedy for what they're doing to conservatives. Uh, But the most important thing is to take back the House and make sure Donald Trump is reelected. Donald Trump's in the right position. It seems very difficult for any candidate or party to win anything if all the information about the race is controlled by people who are working for the other side, which is where we are now. So without whining nope. about why nothing has been done so far, let me ask you. No, Jim Sensenbrenner has taken money from Google. Google is your second biggest campaign contributor in the last cycle. Why do you think they would give you money? And why would you no, take I mean, it? If they, look, if they want to exercise their First Amendment liberties and give me money, that, I raised $3 million last quarter. If- very suspicious and i don't like that and i have a feeling that's why tucker has such a concerned look on his face because that when i heard that is i don't like it that's like saying you know okay george soros gave me money but whatever i don't really care i mean uh if they want to give their money they can but i don't have any allegiance to them listen somebody gives you money and they give you a lot of money your second biggest donor jim you're going to have an allegiance of some kind. There's going to be some agreement there. So don't take that money. I mean, you're, you're good at what you do. Run uh, your reelection campaigns based on what you actually do. And you'll probably get reelected. But when you take money from them, I'm not going to lie. It knocked them down a notch. It really did. And, and quite frankly, you know, I, I, again, I like what Jim Jordan says. I like what Nunez says. Uh, There was a time when I liked what Trey Gowdy said when he was in. But what do they do? What gets done? The the only person I'm more disappointed in is Barr. I saw a meme today with Chris Farley where he was doing the motivational speaker saying, for the love of God, do something. But as I said yesterday, Barr is a deep stater. There's no doubt in my mind that he, and again, remember I said there's levels of deep state. Okay, there's levels. Not saying that he is the the kind that is uh, nefarious, but he's definitely connected in a way where they just will not look into stuff. And he won't even broach the subject, which I find very weird. But I've seen this in the Bureau. I've seen, uh, I've seen where the threshold is one way for somebody who is famous and it's different for somebody who's not. It's The threshold is <clears throat> much lower for somebody who's rich 
uh, when they're being harassed and somebody who's not rich, they, they won't even help out or look at. Same crime, so it's there. Google gives me a few thousand dollar check. God bless them. That doesn't change who I am. You saw that today hmm. in the committee. I what, do, well, what do we see in the committee there, Jim? <clears throat> we saw you getting mad. We saw a lot of things said. What did we see? We didn't see any conclusions. We didn't see any groundbreaking things. Nothing changed there. You didn't break up the social media groups so that they're more sm smaller and more controllable. We didn't see any of that. We're not going to see it. So what do we see today? We saw your character. We didn't hire you for, for to so you could go and display your character. We, you know, people hire you so that you can fix problems, you know, and so you can r help run the government and fund the government. After I went after him for the very issue you just raised, Tucker. In 2016, Google... You went after him and nothing came out of it. ...to tailor their features to help Clinton in key states. That's directly from the email, the head of their multicultural marketing section. Oh, I get it. I mean, I, again, executive. I'm a talk show host. So we talk I, about this stuff all the time, but I where's call, the part where we out. say we're yanking your liability exemption, the one that we don't have at Fox News, but they somehow have, yep. where they can't be sued for garbage on and, their site... And, and and so, where, like, where's the effort to do? You right now, if you put something up about hydroxychloroquine on Facebook, it will get pulled down, okay? However, if you put a video up of people saying F the police, or you put a whole page up, and that's what it's all about, and all your videos are lies about uh, the police and showing how, and, and promoting beating up police, they will not do anything about that. They won't do a thing about it. That I, I, I'm, just, I'm frustrated. I think a lot of our viewers are frustrated. I just like to know, like, when's that going to happen? On it right, we're working on it right now with folks in the Senate. Josh Hawley is working on that. We're, our staff is working with with uh, Senate staff on that issue. What is the way? What's the best way to structure that language? We're looking at that. We're also what the, the Justice Department is doing. Bill Barr is looking at this issue as well. So that. <laughs> You're not helping yourself there, Jim. That's the rim. Now, we may have to write some other law. There are three possible remedies here. All I know is there is a big problem, and there has to be a remedy. We're looking at which is the best course of action to take. But none of it happens, Tucker. None of it happens. If Jerry Nadler is still in charge of the Judiciary Committee and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris get elected well, as president, I, vice president. I, I'm certainly not advocating for Jerry Nadler having more power than he does. But here's the thing. That's enough of that. Here's the thing. He's absolutely right. If, if Jerry Nadler and Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are all elected and they're, and they're all in charge, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a disaster. But why didn't the Republicans do anything before we got to this point? And why did all, that sleeping giant, I did a whole show on this, ranting against it. I hate that term, sleeping giant. Why? Didn't um, the patriots in this country clean house with the Democrats the last time in Congress? What happened? Because listen, let me tell you, there's got to be at least 20,000 conservatives that live in, in the AOC's district. There's got to be. Every, I met tons of conservatives up there. Only 16 to 18,000 people came and voted for AOC. She got elected by that. That means if you would have moved to New York and ran for Congress, nobody knowing anything, and you just went up there day one and just ran it, she only beat you by 18,000 votes in an area where millions of people live. Where are the conservatives? Where are you? Okay, I think we'll call it there. You know, I want to say, I said that was all I was going to say about the Q people. I will say this one other thing. It's not really about you. I've told you how I feel, but one thing I can't understand, if the left thinks that everybody that is in Q is crazy, right, and that the whole thing is crazy, why do they feel the need to get rid of them from all social media? I find that very strange, right? That's the way I look. That's the way I investigate something. If you felt like people are crazy, wouldn't you want them to stay there so that they can hurt the president? Isn't that what you would want? I don't get it. I don't understand what they're up to, but something does not jive as far as that goes. You know, as I've said before, 
the totality of the circumstances is always important to take into account no matter what you're looking at. I don't care where you get your information, but you have to look at the totality of the circumstances. Is there an imminent threat? Are there things happening right now? Is the information that you're getting not adding up over time? Whether or not they get it right sometimes and they don't, can the information be validated? Yes or no? Are they telling you, I will reveal the information in time? If that's the case, don't trust it. Sit back and monitor it, but don't put your faith in that type of thing. Put your faith in yourself, in your own intuition, in your own ability to discern. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts, The Truth has arrived. Peace and we're out of here.